All right, let's do some spying on the hand movements of the surgeon. So it's very important during phacoemulsification or for that matter any surgery we have to study how the hands are moving and when we are doing microsurgery that is under the microscope many times our hand movements are in our blind spot. So when we are looking through the microscope we are not exactly sure how our hands are placed around the patient's eye. So in this video I will be showing few things which we have to observe. I have previous videos also on the hand movements so watch this one also very carefully and here I will be focusing on how the plane of the hand changes during different steps of the surgery. So here I am doing capsulorexis and just watch my hand. It's going at an angle that is it is above the plane of the eye and this is to maintain the anterior chamber. So I am always trying to tent up the incision here so that there is no visco leak. So you can see this approach it's going over the eye. So during capsulorexis this has to be always maintained. So if we depress the posterior lip of the incision it is going to collapse. The anterior chamber will leak OVD and it's collapsing. Now when I'm doing hydro dissection it is other way around. My hands are at the plane or trying to go below the plane of the eye and uh, this is because I want to depress the posterior lip of the incision so that the fluid is not built in the anterior chamber so I want to keep the anterior chamber pressure low. You can watch this difference between these two images here and what you can see is the approach of the hands is different in capsulorexis where I want to maintain the anterior chamber as compared to hydro dissection where I want to leak certain amount of fluid so that there is no fluid build up in the anterior chamber. So just watch this uh, hand position very carefully. I call it up approach and down approach. So always think whether I want to maintain the anterior chamber, I want to inflate the anterior chamber or I want to deflate the anterior chamber and then use the approach appropriately for that particular step. Now for nucleus rotation we have to have up approach because I want to maintain the anterior chamber during nucleus rotation. Now whenever we are negotiating the side port incision first always remember the hand position is below the eye a little bit and then it goes above. So this is how small side incisions can be negotiated when we are entering using Sensky. Uh, many times you struggle if you go directly straight that is the common approach so you go little bit down when you are entering and then tent it up so you avoid fluid leaking out. So that is how it is to be done. Now during FACO just watch how the hands are properly rested over the patient's forehead. If you are doing temporal it has to either rest on the forehead or the cheek of the patient so that you have proper stability of your hands. Just watch it carefully. Many times you hold the probe far away and then you, your fingers cannot reach the patient's face or patient's forehead. So you have to make sure that your hands are properly resting. So you have a stable probe inside the anterior chamber which is very important. And same is true for your other hand, non-dominant hand as well where you are using say Sinsky or a chopper that hand also should be similarly rested. So if you are having difficulties in stability of the hands or uh, during some maneuvers always ask someone to take a video of your hand position when you are doing different steps and uh, when you will compare it with uh, this video you will find out that there are some issues you can correct and make the surgery much more easier. So always remember the up approach and down approach and here what I am showing is how to push the IOL or for that matter any fluid inside the eye. I use the base of the thumb and not the tip of the thumb. That makes it very controlled because your base of the thumb cannot move very quickly unlike the tip of the thumb which can shoot the IOL very fast and can damage the posterior capsule. Same with the fluids as well. So whenever you are injecting anything in the eye, try to use the base of the thumb rather than the tip of the thumb. Another important thing while injecting any fluid in the eye is uh, to always hold the hub. So if you attach the cannula to the 
syringe then always hold the hub so that it doesn't shoot and cause damage to the ocular tissues these are very important observations and uh, i have experienced that the trainees many times struggle with this many times i have seen even the surgeons having fair bit of experience of the surgery when they come for training i find that uh, they do not understand these basics and that's why they keep on struggling in certain steps during the surgery so for many more such videos do visit uh, our website also fakotraining.org.in and in my youtube playlist go to the basic steps playlist and you should go through all the videos uh, and you will understand how to approach the surgery and avoid mistakes thank you so much